Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and more specifically, welcome to the Armory, where we cover every weapon from Halo lore and give it its own dedicated deep dive video. Today we see through the promise I originally gave you back in the AV-14 Hornet most detailed breakdown, and deliver you the M99 Stanchion. Let's begin. <laughs> M99 Special Application Scope Rifle entered production in 2491, manufactured by and for the United Nations Space Command. It is currently unknown if the weapon was actually produced by an arms manufacturer like Mesrea Armory, or if the UNSC had their own weapons manufacturing facilities. In either case, production was stopped in 2521, with its application in the battlefield reducing dramatically thereafter although it still was in heavy employment with the UNSC Spirit of Fire that had gone missing, suspected lost with all hands, back in 2536, and thus continued to employ the stanchions they had aboard and available to them at the time. As a 21 calibre hypersonic anti-material long-range synchronous linear induction motor scoped sniper rifle, the weapon was especially lethal against organic targets, although under the Geneva Convention, using an anti-material weapon against personnel was considered illegal wartime conduct. However, aiming for and shooting a small electronic device on the person's body, such as a remote control, communication device or personal computer, was allowed, in spite of the strike obviously resulting in lethal forces upon the person. This statute of the Geneva Convention and its workaround does in fact apply in our current real-world wartime conduct, but the M99 fires the comparatively tiny 5.4mm round at an incredible velocity, and with the link-in and assistance of supporting computational systems and Argus drone networks, can accurately and repeatably strike a human-sized target at 7.5km or 4.7 miles in range with lethal effect. The M99 is characterised as a coil gun or gorse rifle, but fundamentally operates on the same operational principles as other magnetic weapons, including mass drivers, magnetic accelerator cannons, the rail gun, but albeit on a much smaller scale. The asynchronous linear induction motor accelerates the given projectile via a series of electromagnetic coils rather than chemical propellants. This leads the weapon to being fairly bulky and as such limits the weapon's use to highly specialised, long-range sniping roles. The M99 can be used with a portable computer to provide the ballistic calculations needed to engage long-range targets and can uplink to the shooter's heads-up display in a form of smart scoping, however when paired with the Argus drones for trajectory and ballistic data or the Atlas Plus system, the weapon can display the near-exact trajectory of the round even highlighting it as such as a glowing blue line on the shooter's heads-up display. Of course, in order for it to facilitate this massive acceleration of such a small round, the barrel has to be extraordinarily long. The M99 Stanchion measures 67 inches or 170 centimeters in length on average. There are some that are longer and there are some that are shorter. The weight comes in at a rather bulky 20 kilograms or 44 pounds, making this puppy a particularly chonky boy to be hefting around on a battlefield. The weapon features an extremely long barrel, within which the electromagnetic coils are contained enabling the ammunition of the weapon to be accelerated to the hypersonic velocities so atypical of the M99. Its scope can be manually sighted through, although it is most often used in tandem with heads-up displays particularly heads-up display-enabled glasses or the optics within the standard-issue marine helmet, although there also exist special applications helmets developed specifically for long-range sniping operations that are compatible with the M99. Although it is an anti-material weapon, it is particularly devastating against organic targets, and its sheer velocity and kinetic energy means the round can be fired with immense accuracy, 
even when obstacles stand between the shooter and the target. For example, as detailed in the opening chapters of Contact Harvest, the then Corporal Avery J. Johnson used the M99 Stanchion to assassinate Gerald Ander, the leader of a sectionist union cell on the planet of Harvest. Johnson tracked the target and fired a single round as the target was being driven by in an open-topped truck and the tiny 5.4mm round impacted the target and severed his upper torso from his lower body. Following this, Johnson once again employed the M99 while riding on the skids of an AV-14 Hornet, with the weapon mounted on a shock-absorbing armature. The target, an insurrectionist terrorist, driving a truck rigged with explosives. Allow me to read the exact entry from the book Contact Harvest. It reads as follows. Avery lowered the stanchion on its shock-absorbing armature and hugged it to his shoulder. Immediately, the rifle's targeting system established a wireless link to his helmet's HUD, and a thin blue line angled across the drone's feed. This was the M99's aiming vector the path its 5.4mm tungsten rounds would travel. Avery angled the rifle down until the vector turned green, an indication that his first shot would pass directly through the target individual's chest. Almost as if the man could feel the invisible line enter through his left armpit and exit just below his right, he swiped his credit chip against the counter and swiveled around on his stool. Avery thumbed a solid-state switch in the stanchion's stock, the weapon chirped twice, indicating its battery was fully charged. He performed two calming breaths and whispered, Target acquired. Request permission to fire. In the few seconds it took Lieutenant Colonel Aboim to respond, the target sauntered to the Jim Dandy's wooden double doors. Avery watched him hold the entrance open for a family of four. He imagined the man smiled and said something kind to the two parents as they hurried after their ravenous and rowdy boys. Permission granted, a Boeing replied, fire at will. Avery refocused and increased the pressure of his gloved finger on the stanchion's trigger. He waited for the man to stroll down a short flight of steps until a hash mark on the aiming vector indicated his first shot would angle harmlessly into the parking lot. As the man reached into his baggy coveralls, perhaps for the hauler's key fob, Avery fired. The stanchion slug exited the barrel with a muffled crack and punched through two of the office building's steel-reinforced polycrete floors with no adverse effect to its trajectory. Travelling at 15,000 metres per second, the round whistled over the highway and hit the target at the apex of his sternum. The man flew to pieces as the round buried itself in a rooster tail of pulverised asphalt. This demonstrates not only the weapon's lethality, but its sheer kinetic energy in being able to be fired through reinforced concrete and have no change to its trajectory, and also the weapon's sophisticated mixed reality overlays for bullet trajectory, something we are successfully duplicating with Project Mjolnir at the moment. More on that in the next Mjolnir update video. The M99 is claimed to be a recoilless rifle, however the specifics on how it achieves this hasn't been quite explained. Again, as covered in the recent Railgun Armoury video, even rail, coil or magnetic accelerator weapons still generate some degree of recoil due to the parameters of firing being governed by Lens Law. The rifle fires a 21 caliber or 5.4mm solid tungsten slug with a 10 round feed system. The rifle is also semi-automatic and fires the round at 15,000 meters per second or approximately 9.3 miles per second, with an effective range of up to 7.5 kilometers or 4.7 miles, but again in the hands of a skilled operator, could be substantially more. And in spite of the very small caliber of the weapon in comparison to many of the other calibers of weapons in use by the UNSC in that era, as previously stated in the excerpt from Contact Harvest, the round is capable of quite literally ripping a body apart. A round of solid tungsten at that calibre would have a mass of approximately 11.5 grams, assuming a diameter to length ratio of 5.5 to 1, being the upper threshold of practical length to diameter ratio. So travelling at 15,000 metres per second gives the round a kinetic energy of 1,293,750 joules, 
or 954,221 foot-pounds, being about the same as 7150 cal BMGs fired at once. To quote Halopedia as they put this a damn sight more succinctly than I could, the round creates shockwaves as it passes through the target and ripping through anything not as strong as 12 inches or 30 centimeters of titanium. In the case of material targets, this is a minor explosion and the creation of structural fractures. In the case of personnel targets, it simultaneously rips apart and pulverizes the body around the impact area. Even hits in an extremity or near misses can be deadly. I will just amend that statement, however, that I completely accept that being hit in an extremity with the M99 Stanchion would be effectively lethal. If you got hit in the shoulder, for example, or if you got hit in the upper thigh, it would blow your arm or leg clean off, and of course there's some very large arteries, particularly in the leg, so without immediate and life-saving first aid, that person would die. However, near misses being lethal doesn't actually necessarily make any sense. In order for the round to be fired at 15,000 meters per second, the round would have to be aerodynamic. Aerodynamic means that the round can cut through the air without disturbing the air around it too badly, and the suggestion being that a near miss can be deadly implies that the shock waves created by the round as it passes by would be enough to dismember an individual, but if the round was creating such a huge shockwave as it moved through the air, it wouldn't be able to travel at 15,000 meters per second because it wouldn't be aerodynamic, it would be causing disturbances in the air, meaning it would never reach that velocity to cause those injuries in the first place. I briefly just cut away from my script here while I was recording just to check out whether or not there is actually any truth to this because I've heard this before in regards to like the, the, the 50 BMG being fired and that being like able to take an arm off if it's a near miss and this, that and the other. Well, by all appearances, it is just an old wife's tale. There is actually no evidence to support that a near miss from even extraordinarily large caliber weapons like the 50 BMG would actually cause any injury to an individual if it was a near miss. The, the bullet has to hit you. And again, it's becoming all the more common that I, I seem to be citing this guy, but Demolition Ranch made a video in regards to the 50 BMG and whether or not it can injure or kill a person if it just passes by. And ultimately his conclusion was exactly what I thought it'd be, and that is that it's an old wives' tale. It actually doesn't happen whatsoever. The bullet has to hit you. Because if it was creating that much of a shockwave, it wouldn't be aerodynamic. But again, link to his video is in the description if you do want to check out yourself. But this was just a little cutaway from my main script. So to continue on... Although we've never actually been able to wield this weapon in-game, with the exception of Halo Wars 2, although that doesn't quite translate to the same as using the weapon in first person, there are still some obvious advantages and disadvantages of this weapon that can be inferred from the lore. From an advantageous point of view, the M99 is extremely deadly. As long as the round hits the target, which is more or less guaranteed when employed properly alongside the weapon's support networks and computational systems, the weapon is a one-shot, one-kill. With ten rounds in the magazine, that makes for an impressive level of damage that can be dealt by this weapon. Its sheer range of operation takes the user out of direct engagements by a massive margin, putting them far beyond the distance that enemies could potentially enact any real degree of return fire, and as a weapon, it plays havoc with the enemy morale, in that it is extraordinarily difficult to identify where the shots came from because they're so quiet, and the shots can be made relatively often, and each is basically guaranteed a kill in the most visceral and gruesome way possible, demoralizing the enemy and causing immense psychological distress to the remaining troops. The weapon can also be used in vacuum and in low or zero G environments due to the minimum recoil and no need of an oxidizing propellant. That being said, it's not without its disadvantages, it's far from a perfect weapon. The weapon measures nearly 2 meters in length and is heavy at nearly 20 kilograms. This makes it immensely bulky and cumbersome to be wielded by any normal unaugmented soldiers on the battlefield, although it isn't unheard of. The weapon also likely has a fairly long charge time between shots, with time having to be taken for the power generator providing the weapon's power to build up sufficient charge before the next shot is fired. 
this need to carry a power supply for the weapon also limits its use. Generally, though not always powered by the standard issue UNSC mobile generators, this still adds yet another piece of supporting equipment needed to be used, carried or moved for the weapon's operation. That being said, with developments in energy generation technology however, particularly micronuclear fusion power plants and possibly ways of being able to energetically tether the weapon to armour systems like Mjolnir, the power supply issue could be reduced substantially. All in all, the M99 Stanchion is a devastating long-range weapon. It can fire near silently, has basically no recoil, has levels of mixed reality target trajectory systems and computational systems that basically make it almost impossible to miss, and ultimately when the round does strike the target you can guarantee lethality in, most often than not, very gruesome ways. Although it is an anti-material weapon, it is seemingly very regularly employed against personnel, and to be fair this might be why it ceased production in 2521, due to concerns over the legality of using such a rifle against personnel, and thus how it may factor into the Geneva Convention and be classified as a cruel weapon. Nevertheless, the effects of this weapon speak for themselves, and when at war against an alien aggressor, the Geneva Convention doesn't really apply. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below, and I look forward to what you have to say. And quick shout outs and thank yous to my patrons Spartan10148, my devastatingly effective Metarch class Ancilla, Silver Spartan, Leon, Ram, Prophet Bear, and Irrefutable Justice, my ever vigilant monitors. The careful tending of Alvin, Andrew, Brian, Cameron, Darian, Devon, Phantom, Flaming Halo, Cabal, Legions Lost, Michael, Spartan 0137, The Cave Potato, and Wolf Eclipse, my sub monitors, my growing fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my most loyal of enforcers, and all my awesome Sentinels, Sentries, and Constructors who have jumped aboard on Patreon to help support the channel. You have my debt of gratitude. And, as ever, Todd Morrison, my Tier Zero Transcendent YouTube member. Thanks for keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Remember to like, comment and subscribe, as it all helps the channel grow and helps me to continue to deliver this kind of content for you guys. And if you're ready for your next steps in evolution, head over to Patreon and become a patron there, or become a YouTube member to attain a higher state of being. Much love to all of you, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.